under the stars and stripes by madison kawine read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk high on the world did our fathers of old under the stars and stripes blazon the name that we now must uphold under the stars and stripes vast in the past they have builded an arch over which freedom has lighted her torch follow it follow it come let us march under the stars and stripes we in whose bodies the blood of them runs under the stars and stripes we will acquit us as sons of their sons under the stars and stripes ever for justice our heel upon wrong we in the light of our vengeance thrice strong rally together come tramping along under the stars and stripes out of our strength and a nation's great need under the stars and stripes heroes again as of old we shall breed under the stars and stripes broad to the winds be our banner unfurled straight in spain's face let defiance be hurled god on our side we will battle the world under the stars and stripes end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Dedication by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T Are not for us the heavens that hold God's message of Promethean fire, The flame that fell on bards of old To hallow and inspire? Yet let the soul dream on and dare No less song's height than these possess, We can but fail and may prepare the way to some success. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Effervescent Beautiful by Madison Carwain. Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. Day after day, young with eternal beauty, pays flowery duty to the month and clime night after night erects a vasty portal of stars immortal for the march of time but where are now the glory and the rapture that once did capture me in cloud and stream where now the joy that was both speech and silence where the beguilance that was fact and dream i know that earth and heaven are as golden as they of olden made me feel and see not in themselves is lacking aught of power through star and flower something's lost in me return return i cry o visions vanished o voices banished to my soul again the near earth blossoms and the far skies glisten I look and listen, but alas, in vain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. August by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Clad on with glowing beauty and the peace benign of calm maturity she stands among her meadows and her orchard lands and on her mellowing gardens and her trees out of the ripe abundance of her hands bestows increase and fruitfulness as wrapped in sunny ease blue-eyed and blonde she goes upon her bosom summer's richest rose and he who follows where her footsteps lead by hill and rock by forest side and stream shall glimpse the glory of her visible dream in flower and fruit in rounded nut and seed 
she in whose path the very shadows gleam whose humblest weed seems lovelier than june's loveliest flower indeed and sweeter to the smell than april's self within a rainy dell hers is a sumptuous simplicity within the fair republic of her flowers where you may see her standing hours on hours breast deep in gold soft holding up a bee to her hushed ear or sitting under bowers of greenery a butterfly a tilt upon her knee or lounging on her hip dancing a cricket on her finger tip ay let me breathe hot scents that tell of you the hoary catnip and the meadow mint on which the honour of your touch doth print itself as odour let me drink the hue of ironweed and mist flower here that hint with purple and blue the rapture that your presence doth imbue the inmost essence with immortal though as transient as a myth yea let me feed on sounds that still assure me where you hide the brooks whose happy din tells where the deep retired woods within disrobed you bathe the birds whose drowsy lure tells where you slumber your warm nestling chin soft on the pure pink cushion of your palm what better cure for care and memory's ache than to behold you so and watch you wake end of poem this recording is in the public domain the higher brotherhood by madison k wine read for LibriVox.org by nemo the higher brotherhood to come in touch with mysteries of beauty idealizing earth go seek the hills grown old with trees the old hills wise with death and birth there you may hear the heart that beats in streams where music has its source and in wild rocks of green retreats behold the silent soul of force above the love that emanates from human passion and reflects the flesh must be the love that waits on nature whose high call elects none to her secrets save the few who hold that facts are far less real than dreams with which all facts endue themselves approaching the ideal end a poem this recording is in the public domain Grammarie by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Grammarie. There are some things that entertain me more than men or books, and to my knowledge seem a key of poetry made of magic lore, of childhood opening many a fabled door, of superstition, mystery, and dream enchantment locked of yore for when through dusking woods my pathway lies often i feel old spells as o'er me flits the bat like some black thought that troubled flies round some dark purpose or before me cries the owl that like an evil conscious sits a shadowy voice and eyes then when down blue canals of cloudy snow the white moon oars her boat and woods vibrate with crickets low i hear the hot boys blow of elfland and when green the fireflies glow see where the goblins hold a fairy fete with lanthorn row on row strange growths that ooze from long dead logs and spread a creamy fungus where the snail uncoiled and fat slug feed at morn are pixie bread 
made of these did do the lichens red besides these grown our meat the brownies broiled above a glowworm bed the smears of silver on the webs that line the trees crooked roots or stretch white woven within the hollow stump are stains of fairy wine spilled on the cloth where elfland sat to dine when night beheld them drinking chin to chin oh the moon's fermented shine what but their chairs the mushrooms on the lawn or toadstools hidden under flower and fern tagged with a dotting dew with knees updrawn far as his eyes have i not come upon puck seated there but scarcely round could turn ere presto he was gone and so though science from the woods hath tracked the elfin and with prosy lights of day unhallowed all his haunts in dulling blacked our eyesight still hath beauty never lacked for seers yet who in some wizard way prove fancy real as fact and a poem this recording is in the public domain dreams by madison k wine read for LibriVox.org by nemo dreams my thoughts have borne me far away to beauties of an older day where crowned with roses stands the dawn striking her seven-stringed barbiton of flame whose chords give being to the seven colors hue for hue the music of the colored dream she builds the day from beam by beam my thoughts have borne me far away to myths of a diviner day where sitting on the mountain noon sings to the pines a sun-soaked tune of rest and shade and clouds and skies wherein her calm dreams idolize light as a presence heavenly fair sleeping with all her beauty bare my thoughts have borne me far away to visions of a wiser day where stealing through the wilderness night walks a sad-eyed votaress and prays with mystic words she hears behind the thunder of the spheres the starry utterance that's hers with which she fills the universe and a poem this recording is in the public domain the old house by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by nemo the old house quaint and forgotten by an unused road an old house stands around its doors the dense blue iron weeds grow high the chipmunks make a highway of its fence and on its sunken flagstones slug and toad silent as lichens lie the timid snake upon its hearth's cool sand sleeps undisturbed the squirrel haunts its roof and in the clapboard sides of closets dim with many a spider woof like the uncertain tapping of a hand the beetle borer hides above its lintel under mossy eaves the mud wasp build their cells and in the floor of its neglected porch the black bees nest through each deserted door vague as a phantom's footsteps steal the leaves and dropped cones of the larch but come with me when sunset's magic old transforms the ruin of that ancient house when windows one by one like age's eyes that youth's love dreams arouse grows lairs of fire and glad mouths of gold its wide doors in the sun or let us wait until each rain-stained room is carpeted with moonlight patterned off with the deep boughs o'erhead 
and through the house the wind goes rustling soft, as might the ghost, a whisper of perfume, of some sweet girl long dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rock by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo the rock here at its base in dingled deeps of spice bush where the ivy creeps the cold spring scoops its hollow and there three mossy stepping stones make ripple murmurs undertones of foam that blend and follow with voices of the wood that drones the quail pipes here when noons are hot and here in coolness sunlight shot beneath a roof of briars the red fox skulks at close of day and here at night the shadows gray stand like franciscan friars with moonbeam beads whereon they pray here yawns the groundhog's dark dug hole and there the tunnel of the mole heaves under weed and flower a sandy pitfall here and there the ant line digs and lies a lair and here for sun and shower the spider weaves a silvery snare the poison oak's rank tendrils twine the rock's south side the trumpet vine with crimson bugles sprinkled makes green its eastern side the west is rough with lichens and gray pressed into an angle wrinkled the hornets hang an oblong nest the north is hid from sun and star and here like an inquisitor of fairy inquisition that roots out elfland heresy deep in the rock with mystery cowled for his grave commission the owl sits magisterially. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rain by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Rain. Around the stillness deepened. Then the grain went wild with wind, in every briery lane was swept with dust, and then, tempestuous black, hillward the tempest heaved a monster back, that on the thunder leaned as on a cane, and on huge shoulders bore a cloudy pack, that gully gold from many a lightning crack. One great drop splashed and wrinkled down the pane, and then field, hill, and wood were lost in rain. At last, through clouds, as from a cavern hewn, into night's heart, the sun burst, angry rune, and every cedar, with its weight of wet, against the sunset's fiery splendor set, Frightened to beauty, seamed with rubies strewn, then in drenched gardens like sweet phantoms met. Dim odors rose of pink and mignonette, and in the east a confidence that soon grew to the calm assurance of the moon. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Standing Stone Creek by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Standing Stone Creek. A weed grown slope, whereon the rain has washed the brown rocks bare, leads tangled from a lonely lane down to a creek's broad stair of stone that, through the solitude, winds onward to a quiet wood 
an intermittent roof of shade the beach above it throws along its steps a balustrade of beauty builds the rose in which a stately lamp of green at intervals the cedars seen the water carpeting each ledge of rock that runs across glints twixt a flower embroidered edge of ferns and grass and moss and in its deeps the wood and sky seem patterns of the softest dye long corridors of pleasant dusk within the house of leaves it reaches where on looms of musk the ceaseless locust weaves a web of summer and perfume trails a sweet gown from room to room green windows of the boughs that swing it passes where the notes of birds are glad thoughts entering and butterflies are motes and now a vista where the day opens a door of wind and ray it is a stairway for all sounds that haunt the woodland sides on which boy-like the south wind bounds girl-like the sunbeam glides and like fond parents following these the old-time dreams of rest and peace and a poem this recording is in the public domain the moon men by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by nemo the moon men i stood in the forest on huron hill when the night was old and the world was still the wind was a wizard who muttering strode in a raven cloak on a haunted road the sound of water a witch who crooned her spells to the rocks the rain had ruined and the gleam of the dew on the fern's green tip was a sylvan passing with robe a-drip the light of the stars was a glimmering maid who stole an elfin from glade to glade the scent of the woods in the delicate air a wildflower shape with chilly hair and silence a spirit who sat alone with a lifted finger and eyes of stone and it seemed to me these six were met to greet a greater who came not yet and the speech they spoke that i listened to was the archetype of the speech i knew for the wind clasped hands with the water's rush and i heard them whisper hush oh hush the light of the stars and the dew's cool gleam touched lips and murmured dream oh dream the scent of the woods and the silence deep sighed bosom to bosom sleep oh sleep and so for a moment the six were dumb then exulted together they come they come and i stood expectant and seemed to hear a visible music drawing near and the first who came was the captain moon bearing a shield in god's house hewn then an army of glamour a glittering host beleaguered the night from coast to coast and the world was filled with spheric fire from the palpitant chords of many a lyre as out of the east the moon men came smiting their harps of silver and flame more beauty and grace did their forms express than the queen of love's white nakedness more chastity too their faces held than the snowy breast of diana swelled 
translucent limbed i saw the beat in their hearts of pearl of the golden heat and the hair they tossed was a crystal light and the eyes beneath it were burning white their hands that lifted their feet that fell made the darkness blossom to asphodel and the heavens the hills and the streams they trod shone pale with a communicated god a placid frenzy a walking trance a soft oracular radiance wrapped forms that moved as melodies move laurelled with godhead and haloed with love so there in the forest on huron hill the moonmen camped when the world was still what wonder that they who have looked on these are lost to the earth's realities that they sit aside with a far-off look dreaming the dreams that are writ in no book that they walk alone till the day they die even as i yea even as i and a poem this recording is in the public domain the old man dreams by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by nemo the old man dreams the blackened walnut in its spicy hall rots where it fell and in the orchard where the trees stand full the pear's ripe bell drops and the log house in the bramble lane from whose low door stretch yellowing acres of the corn and cane he sees once more the catbird sings upon its porch of pine and o'er its gate all slender potted twists the trumpet vine a leafy weight and in the woodland by the spring mayhap with eyes of joy again he bends to set a rabbit trap a brown-faced boy then whistling through the underbrush he goes out of the wood where with young cheeks red as an autumn rose beneath her hood his sweetheart waits her school books on her arm and now it seems beside his chair he sees his wife's fair form the old man dreams and a poem this recording is in the public domain since then by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by nemo since then i found myself among the trees what time the reapers cease to reap and in the berry blooms the bees huddled wee heads and went to sleep rocked by the silence and the breeze i saw the red fox leave his lair a shaggy shadow on the knoll and tunneling his thoroughfare beneath the loam i watched the mole stealth's own self could not take more care i heard the death moth tick and stir slow honeycombing through the bark i heard the crickets drowsy chirr and one lone beetle burr the dark the sleeping woodland seemed to purr and then the moon rose in a white low bough of blossoms grown almost where ere you died twas our delight to tryst dear heart i thought your ghost the wood is haunted since that night end a poem this recording is in the public domain Comrades by Madison Kawine, read for LibriVox.org 
by Bruce Kachuk. Down through the woods, along the way that fords the stream, by rock and tree, where in the bramble bell the bee swings, and through twilight's green and gray, the red bird flashes suddenly. My thoughts went wandering today. I found the fields where, row on row, the blackberries hang black with fruit, where, nesting at the elder's root, the partridge whistles soft and low, the fields that billow to the foot of those old hills we used to know. There lay the pond, still willow-bound, on whose bright surface, when the hot noon burnt above, we chased the knot of water-spiders, while around our heads, like bits of rainbow, shot the dragonflies without a sound. The pond above which evening bent to gaze upon her rosy face, wherein the twinkling night would place a vague inverted firmament in which the green frogs tuned their bass and firefly sparkles came and went the old-time woods we often ranged when we were playmates you and i the old-time fields with boyhood sky still blue above them naught was changed nothing alas then tell me why should we be whom long years estranged end of poem this recording is in the public domain waiting by madison k wine read for librivox dot org by iswa in belgium in august two thousand and seventeen Come to the hills, the woods are green. The heart is high when love is sweet. There is a brook that flows between two mossy trees where we can meet, where we can meet and speak and seen. I hear you laughing in the lane. The heart is high when love is sweet. The clover smells of sun and rain and spreads a carpet for our feet where we can sit and dream again. Come to the woods, the dusk is here. The heart is high when love is sweet. A bird upon the branches near Sets music to our heart's glad beat, Our hearts that beat with something dear. I hear your step, the lean is past. The heart is high when love is sweet. The little stars come bright and fast, Like happy eyes to see us greet, to see us greet and kiss at last. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Contrasts by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk. No eve of summer ever can attain the gladness of that eve of late july when mid the roses filled with musk and rain against the wondrous topaz of the sky i met you leaning on the pasture bars while heaven and earth grew conscious of the stars no night of blackest winter can repeat the bitterness of that december night when at your gate gray glittering with sleet within the glimmering square of window light we parted long you clung unto my arm while heaven and earth surrendered to the storm end of poem this recording is in the public domain In June by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Deep in the west 
a berry-colored bar of sunset gleams against which one tall fir is outlined dark above which courier of dew and dreams burns dusk's appointed star and flash on flash as when the elves wage war in goblin land the fireflies bombard the stillness and like spirits o'er the sward the glimmering winds bring fragrance from afar and now withdrawn into the hill wood belts a whippoorwill while with attendant states of purple and silver slow the great moon melts into the night to show me where she waits like some slim moonbeam by the old beech tree who keeps her lips fresh as a flower for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain after long grief and pain by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by bruce gachuk there is a place hung o'er with summer boughs and drowsy skies wherein the gray hawk sleeps where waters flow within whose lazy deeps like silvery prisms that the winds arouse the minnows twinkle where the bells of cows tinkle the stillness and the bob-white keeps calling from meadows where the reaper reaps and children's laughter haunts an old-time house a place where life wears ever an honest smell of hay and honey sun and elder bloom like some dear modest girl within her hair where with our love for comrade we may dwell far from the city's strife whose cares consume oh take my hand and let me lead you there End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Can I Forget? by Madison K. Wine, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. Can I forget how love once led the ways of our two lives together, joining them? how every hour was his anadem and every day a tablet in his praise can i forget how in his garden place among the purple roses stem to stem we heard the rumour of his robe's bright hem and saw the aureate radiance of his face though i behold my soul's high dreams down hurled and falsehood sit where truth once towered white and in love's place usurping lust and shame. Though flowers be dead within the winter world, are flowers not there? And starless though the night, are stars not there, eternal and the same? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The House of Fear by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The House of Fear. Vast are its halls, as vast the halls, and lone where death stalks, listening to the wind and rain. And dark that house, where I shall meet again my long dead sin in some dread way unknown. For I have dreamed of stairs of haunted stone. In spectre footsteps I have fled in vain, And windows glaring with a blood-red stain, And horrible eyes that burn me to the bone. Within a face that looks as that black night it looked, When deep I dug for it a grave, The dagger wound above the brow, the thin blood 
trickling down slantwise the ghastly white and i have dreamed not even god can save me and my soul from that risen sin and a poem this recording is in the public domain at dawn by madison k wine read for LibriVox.org by nemo at dawn far off i heard dark waters rush the sky was cold the dawn broke green and wrapped in twilight and strange hush the gray wind moaned between a voice rang through the house of sleep and through its halls there went a tread mysterious raiment seemed to sweep around the pallid dead and then i knew that i had died i who had suffered so and sinned and it was myself i stood beside in the wild dawn and wind and a poem this recording is in the public domain Storm by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Storm. I looked into the night and saw God writing with tumultuous flame upon the thunder's front of awe. As on sonorous brass, the law, terrific of his judgment name weary of all life's best and worst with hands of hate i who had pled i who had prayed for death at first and had not died now stood and cursed god yet he would not strike me dead end a poem this recording is in the public domain Memories by Madison Kawine, read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. Here, where love lies perished, look not in upon the dead, lest the shadowy curtains, shaken in my heart's dark chamber, waken ghosts, beneath whose garb of sorrow, William Gladness bows his head. When you come at morn tomorrow, look not in upon the dead, here where love lies perished here where love lies cold interred let no syllable be heard lest the hollow echoes housing in my soul's deep tomb arousing wake a voice of woe once laughter claimed and clothed in joy's own word when you come at dusk or after let no syllable be heard here where love lies cold interred end of poem this recording is in the public domain witch by madison carwain read for librivox.org by pat mathewson july 2017 england the wind was on the forest and silence on the wold and darkness on the waters, and heaven was starry cold, when sleep with mystic magic bade me this thing behold. This side an iron woodland, that side an iron waste, and heaven a tower of iron, wherein the wan moon paced, still as a phantom woman, icy-eyed and icy-faced, and through the haunted tower of silence and of night, my soul and I went only, my soul whose face was white, whose one hand signed me listen, one bore a taper light. For lo, a voice behind me kept sighing in my ear, the dreams my flesh accepted, my mind refused to hear, of one I loved and loved not, whose spirit now spake near. And lo, a voice before me kept calling constantly, the hopes my mind accepted, my flesh refused to see, of one I loved and loved not, whose spirit spake to me. This way the one would bid me, this way the other saith. Sweet is the voice behind me, of life that followeth, and sweet the voice before me, 
of life whose name is death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunset in Autumn by Madison Corwine Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Blood-coloured oaks that stand against a sky of gold and brass Gaunt slopes on which the bleak leaves glow of briar and sassafras And broom sedge strips of smoky pink and pearl-grey clumps of grass In which, beneath the ragged sky, the rain pools gleam like glass. From west to east, from wood to wood, along the forest side, the winds, the sowers of the Lord, with thunderous footsteps stride, their stormy hands rain acorns down, and mad leaves wildly died, like tatters of their rushing cloaks, stream round them far and wide. The frail leaf cricket in the weeds rings a faint fairy bell, and like a torch of phantom ray, the milkweed's windy shell glimmers, while wrapped in withered dreams, the wet autumnal smell of loam and leaf, like some sad ghost, steals over field and dell. The oaks against the copper sky, o'er which, like some black lake of dis, Dark clouds, like surges fringed with sullen fire, break, loom sombre as doom citadel above the vales that make a pathway to a land of mist the moon's pale feet shall take. Now, dyed with burning carbuncle, a limbo litten pane within its wall of storm, the west opens to hill and plain on which the wild geese ink themselves, a far triangled train. And then the shuttering clouds close down, and night is here again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Legend of the Stone by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Legend of the Stone The year was dying, and the day was almost dead. The west, beneath the somber gray, was somber red. The gravestones in the ghostly light, mid trees half bare, seemed phantoms clothed in glimmering white that haunted there. I stood beside the grave of one who, here in life, had wronged my home, who had undone my child and wife. I stood beside his grave until the moon came up, as if the dark, unhallowed hill lifted a cup. No stone was there to mark his grave, no flower to grace. It was meet that weeds alone should wave in such a place. I stood beside his grave until the stars swam high, and all the night was iron still from sky to sky. What cared I if strange eyes seemed bright within the gloom, if evil blue a wandering light burnt by each tomb? Or that each crooked thorn tree seemed a witch hag cloaked? Or that the owl above me screamed, the raven croaked? For I had cursed him when the day was sullen red, had cursed him when the west was gray and day was dead. And now, when night made dark the pole, both soon and late, I cursed his body. Yea, and soul, with the hate of hate. Once in my soul I seemed to hear a low voice say, It were better to forgive and fear thy God and pray. I laughed, and from pale lips of stone 
on sculptured tombs a mocking laugh replied alone deep in the glooms and then i felt i felt as if some force should seize the body and its limbs stretch stiff and fastening freeze down downward deeper than the knees into the earth while still among the twisted trees that voice made mirth and in my soul was fear despair like lost ones feel when knotted in their pitch stiff hair they feel the steel of devil's forks lift up through sleet of hell's slant fire then plunge as white from head to feet i grew entire a voice without me yet within as still as frost intoned thy sin is thrice a sin thrice art thou lost behold how god would punish thee for this thy crime thy crime of hate and blasphemy through endless time or him whom thou wouldst not forgive record what good he did on earth and let him live loved understood be memory thine of all the worst he did thine own there at the head of him i cursed i stood a stone and a poem this recording is in the public domain Time and Death and Love by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Time and Death and Love Last night I watched for death, so sick of life was I, when in the street beneath I heard his watchman cry the hour while passing by. I called and in the night i heard him stop below his owlish lanthorn's light blurring the windy snow how long the time and slow i said why dost thou cower there at my door and knock come in it is the hour cease fumbling at the lock naught's well tis no o'clock black through the door with him swept in the winter's breath his cloak was great and grim but he who smiled beneath had the face of love not death and a poem this recording is in the public domain passion by madison k wine Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. The wine-loud laughter of indulged desire Upon his lips and in his eyes the fire Of uncontrol he takes in reckless hands And interrupts with discords the sad lyre Of love's deep soul, and never understands. And of poem, this recording is in the public domain. When the Wine Cup at the Lip by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. When the wine cup at the lip slants its sparkling fire, or its level while you sip, have you marked the fingertip of the god desire slip? Of the god desire saying lo the hours run live your day before tis done when the empty goblet lies at the ended revel in the glass the wine stain dies have you marked the hollow eyes of a mocking devil rise of a mocking devil saying lo the day is through look on joy it gave to you End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Art by Madison K. Wine. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Art, a fantasy. I know not how I found you, with your wild hair ablow, nor why the world around you would never let me know. Perhaps was heaven relented, perhaps was hell resented, my dream and grimly vented its hate upon me so. In shadow land I met you, where all dim shadows meet. Within my heart I set you, a phantom bittersweet. No hope for me to win you, though I with soul and sinew strive on and on when in you there is no heart or heat. Yet ever, I and ever, although I knew you lied, I fouled on, but never would your white form abide. With loving arms stretched meward, as sirens beckon seaward, to some fair vessel leeward, before me you would glide. But like an evil fairy, that mocks one with a light, now near you led your airy, now far your fitful flight. With red gold tresses blowing, and eyes of sapphire glowing, with limbs like marble showing, you lured me through the night. To some unearthly revel, of mimes a motley crew, twixt angel land and devil, you lured me on, I knew, and lure me still soft whiling, the way with hopes beguiling, while dark despair sits smiling, behind the eyes of you. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Song for Old Age by Madison K. Wine, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Now nights grow cold and colder, and north the wild vein swings, and round each tree and boulder the driving snowstorm sings. Come, make my old heart older, O oh, memory of lost things, Of hope when promise sung her brave songs, And I was young, that banquets now on hunger, Since all youth's songs are sung, Of love who walks with younger sweethearts the flowers among. Ah, well, while life holds levy, death's ceaseless dance goes on. So let the curtains heavy about my couch be drawn, the curtains sad and heavy, where all shall sleep anon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tristram and Isolt by Madison Kaywin Read for LibriVox.org Night and vast caverns of rock and of iron Voices like water and voices like wind Horror and tempests of hail that environ Shapes and the shadows of two who have sinned Wan on the whirlwind in loathing uplifting faces that loved once forever they go tristram and isolt the lovers go drifting the sullen laughter of hell below end of poem this recording is in the public domain the better lot by madison cowan Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons Her life was bound to crutches, pale and bent, But smiling ever, she would go and come. For of her soul God made an instrument Of strength and comfort to an humble home. Better a life of toil and slow disease That love companions through the patient years Than one whose heritage is loveless ease that never knows the blessedness of tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Dusk in the Woods by Madison Cowing. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Three miles high of hill it is, and I came through the woods that waited dumb for the cool summer dust to come, and lingered there to watch the sky, up which the gradual sunset clumb. A tree toad quavered in a tree, and then a sudden whippoorwill called overhead, so wildly shrill. The startled woodland seemed to see how very lone it was and still. Then through dark boughs its stealthy flight an owl took, and, at sleepy strife, the cricket turned its fairy fife. And through the dead leaves in the night saw frustling stirred of unseen life. And in the punk wood everywhere the inserts ticked or borrowed below the rotted bark and, glow on glow, the gleaming fireflies here and there lit up their jack o' lantern show. I heard a vesper sparrow sing, withdrawn it seemed into the far, slow sunset's tranquil cinnabar, the sunset softly smoldering behind gaunt trunks with its one star. A dog barked and down ways that gleamed, through dew and clover faint the noise of cowbells moved, and then a voice that sang a milking, so it seemed, may glad my heart as some glad boys. And then the lane and full in view, a farmhouse with a rose-grown gate, and honeysuckle paths await. For night's white moon and love and you, these are the things that made me late. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At the Ferry by Madison Cowing. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons. Oh, dim and wan came in the dawn, and gloomy closed the day. The kildee whistled among the weeds, the heron flapped in the river reeds, and the snipe piped far away. At dawn she stood, her dark gray hood flung back in the ferry boat. Sad were the eyes that watched him ride, her raider love from the riverside, his kiss on her mouth and throat. Like some wild spell the twilight fell, and black the tempest came. The heavens seemed filled with the warring dead, whose batteries opened overhead with thunder and with flame. At night again in the wind and rain she toiled at the ferry oar, for she heard a voice in the night and storm, and it seemed that her lover's shadowy form beckoned her to the shore. And swift to save she braved the wave, and reached the shore and found his riderless horse with head hung low a blur of blood on the saddle bow in the empty night around end of poem this recording is in the public domain her violin by madison kawine read for LibriVox.org by ian king her violin again begin the dream notes of her violin and dim and fair with gold-brown hair i seem to see her standing there soft-eyed and sweetly slender the room again with strain on strain vibrates to love's melodious pain as sloping slow is poised her bow while round her form the golden glow of sunset spills its splendour her violin now deep now thin again i hear her violin and dream by dream again i seem to see the love light's tender gleam beneath her eyes long lashes while to my heart she seems a part of her pure song's inspired art and as she plays the rosy greys of twilight halo hair and face while sunset burns to ashes o oh, violin cease cease within my soul o oh, haunting violin in vain in vain you bring again back from the past the blissful pain of all the love then spoken when on my breast at happy rest a sunny while her head was pressed 
peace, peace to these wild memories, for, like my heart, naught remedies, her violin lies broken. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her Vesper Song by Madison Kawine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk The summer lightning comes and goes In one pale cloud above the hill As if within its soft repose A burning heart were never still As in my bosom pulses beat Before the coming of his feet all drugged with odorous sleep the rose breathes dewy balm about the place as if the dreams the garden knows took immaterial form and face as in my heart sweet thoughts arise beneath the ardor of his eyes the moon above the darkness shows an orb of silvery snow and fire as if the night would now disclose to heaven her one divine desire as in the rapture of his kiss all of my soul is drawn to his the cloud it knows not that it glows the rose knows nothing of its scent nor knows the moon that it bestows light on our earth and firmament so is the soul unconscious of the beauties it reveals through love end of poem this recording is in the public domain At Parting by Madison K. Wine, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. What is there left for us to say? Now it has come to say goodbye, and all our dreams of yesterday have vanished in the sunset sky. What is there left for us to say? now different ways before us lie a word of hope a word of cheer a word of love that still shall last when we are far to bring us near through memories of the happy past a word of hope a word of cheer to keep our sad hearts true and fast what is there left for us to do now it has come to say farewell and care that bade us once adieu returns again with us to dwell what is there left for us to do now different ways our fates compel clasp hands and sigh touch lips and smile and look the love that shall remain when severed so by many a mile the sweetest balm for bitterest pain clasp hands and sigh touch lips and smile and trust in god to meet again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Carissima Mea by Madison K. Wine, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017. I look upon my lady's face, and in the world about me see no face like hers in any place. Therefore it is I sing her praise. It is not made as others sing of their dear loves like ivory, but like a wild rose in the spring therefore it is i sing her praise her brow is low and very fair and o'er it smooth and shadowy lies deep the darkness of her hair therefore it is i sing her praise beneath her brows her eyes are grey and gaze out glad and fearlessly their wonder haunts me night and day therefore it is i sing her praise 
her eyebrows, arched and delicate, twin curves of penciled ebony, within their spans contain my fate. Therefore it is I sing her praise. Her mouth, that was for kisses curved, so small and sweet, it well may be that it for me is yet reserved. Therefore it is I sing her praise. Between her hair and rounded chin, Calm with her soul's calm purity, There lies no shadow of a sin. Therefore it is I sing her praise. Of perfect form, she is not tall, Just higher than the heart of me, Where I place her all in all. Therefore it is I sing her praise. She is not shaped, as some have sung Of their dear loves, like some slim tree, but like the moon when it is young. Therefore it is I sing her praise. Her hands, that smell of violet, so white and fashioned gracefully, have woven round my heart a net. Therefore it is I sing her praise. Yea, I have loved her many a day, and though for me she may not be, still at her feet my love I lay. Therefore it is I sing her praise. Albeit she be not for me, God send her grace, and grant that she know not of sorrow all her days. Therefore it is I sing her praise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Marjorie by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson July 2017 England. When spring is here and Marjorie goes walking in the woods with me, she is so white, she is so shy, the little leaves clap hands and cry, Birdie! So white is she, so sky is she, ah oh, me, the maiden May hath just passed by. When summer's here and Marjorie goes walking in the fields with me, she is so pure, she is so fair, the wild flowers eye her and declare, Purdy! So pure is she, so fair is she, just see where our sweet cousin takes the air. Why is it that my Marjorie hears nothing that these say to me? She is so good, she is so true, my heart it maketh such a do. Purdy! So good is she, so true is she, you see, she cannot hear the other two. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Constance by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Pat Mathewson July 2017, England Beyond the orchard in the lane The crested redbird sings again. O oh, bird whose song says, have no care. Should I not care when Constance there, my Constance with the bashful gaze, pink gowned like some sweet hollyhock, if I declare my love, just says, some careless thing as if in mock, like, past the orchard in the lane, how sweet the red bird sings again. There, while the red bird sings his best, his listening mate sits on the nest. O oh, bird, whose patience says, all's well, how can it be with me, now tell? When Constance, with averted eyes, soft bonneted as some sweet pea, if I speak marriage, just replies, with some such quaint irrelevancy, as, while the red bird sings his best, his loving mate sits on the nest. What shall I say? What can I do? Would such replies mean aught to you, O oh, birds whose gladness says, Be glad! Have I not reason to be sad, When Constance with demurest glance, Her face a poppy with distress, If I reproach her, pouts, perchance, And answers so in waywardness? What shall I say? What can I do? My meaning should be plain to you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gertrude by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017 
when first I gazed on Gertrude's face, beheld her loveliness and grace. Her brave grey eyes, her raven hair, her ways, more winsome than the kiss spring gives the flowers. Her smile, that is brighter than all the summer air made sweet with birds, I did declare, and still declare, there is no one, no girl beneath the moon or sun so beautiful to look upon. And to my thoughts, that on her dwell, nothing seems more desirable, not offer gold nor orient pearls, than seems this jewel girl of girls. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lydia by Madison Cowine Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King When autumn's here and days are short, Let Lydia laugh and hey, Straightway tis May Day in my heart, And blossoms strew the way. When summer's here and days are long, Let Lydia sigh and ho, December's fields I walk among, and shiver in the snow. No matter what the seasons are, my Lydia is so dear, my soul admits no calendar of earth when she is near. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Southern Girl by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Ezwa in Belgium in August 2017. Serious but smiling, stately and serene, and dreamier than a flower. A girl in whom all sympathies convene as perfumes in a bower. Through whom one feels what soul and heart may mean, and their resistless power. Eyes that commune with the frank skies of truth, where thought like starlight curls, lips of immortal rose, where love and youth nestle like two sweet pearls, hair that suggests the Bible braids of Ruth, deeper than any girl's. When I first saw you, twas as if within my soul took shape some song, played by a master of the violin. A music pure and strong that wrapped my soul above all earthly sin to heights that know no wrong. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Daughter of the States by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. She has the eyes of some barbarian queen leading her wild tribes into battle, eyes wherein the unconquerable soul defies, and love sits throned, imperious and serene. And I have thought that liberty, alone among the mountain stars, might look like her, kneeling to God, her only emperor, kindling her torch on freedom's altar stone. For in herself, regal with riches of beauty and youth, again those queens seem born. Boadicea, meeting scorn with scorn, and Ermengarde, returning love for love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Autumn Night by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in August 2017 Some things are good on autumn nights When with the storm the forest fights And in the room the heaped earth lights Old-fashioned press and rafter Plump chestnuts hissing in the heat, a mug of cider sharp and sweet, and at your side a face petite with lips of laughter. Upon the roof the rolling rain and tapping at the window pane, 
the wind that seems a witch's cane that summons spells together a hand within your own a while a mouth reflecting back your smile and eyes two stars whose beams exile all thoughts of weather and while the wind lulls still to sit and watch her file it needles flit a knitting and to feel her knit your very heart strings in it then when the old clock ticks tis late to rise and at the door to wait two words or at the garden gate a kissing minute end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lines by Madison K. Wine, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. If God should say to me, Behold, yea, who shall doubt? They who love others more than me, shall I not turn, as oft of old, my face from them and cast them out? So let it be with thee, behold, I should not care, for in your face is all god's grace if god should say to me behold is it not well they who have other gods than me shall i not bid them as of old depart into the outer hell so let it be with thee behold i should not care for in your eyes is paradise End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Blind God by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish I know not if she be unkind, If she have faults, I do not care. Search through the world, where will you find A face like hers, a form, a mind? I love her to despair. If she be cruel, cruelty is a great virtue, I will swear. If she be proud, then pride must be akin to heaven's divinest three. I love her to despair. Why speak to me of that and this? All you may say weighs not a hair in her, whose lips I may not kiss. To me naught but perfection is. I love her to despair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Valentine by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish My life is grown a witchcraft place Through gazing on thy form and face. Now tis thy smile's soft sorcery That makes my soul a melody. Now tis thy frown that comes and goes That makes my heart a page of prose. Some day, perhaps, a word of thine Will change me to thy valentine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Catch by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish When roads are mired with ice and snow And the air of morn is crisp with rhyme When the holly hangs by the mistletoe And bells ring in the Christmas time It's saddle my heart and ride away To the sweet-faced girl with the eyes of grey who waits with a smile for the gifts you bring, A man's strong love and a wedding ring, It's saddle my heart and ride. When veins veer north and storm winds blow, And the sun of noon is a blur o'erhead, When the holly hangs by the mistletoe, And the Christmas service is sung and said, It's come, O oh my heart, and wait a while, where the organ peals in the altar aisle, 
for the gifts that the church now gives to you a woman's hand and a heart that's true it's come o oh my heart and wait when rooms gleam warm with the fire's glow and the sleet raps sharp on the window pane when the holly hangs by the mistletoe and christmas revels begin again it's home o oh my heart and love at last and her happy breast to your own held fast a song to sing and a tale to tell a good-night kiss and all is well it's home o oh my heart and love end of poem this recording is in the public domain The New Year by Madison K. Wine, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Lift up thy torch, O year, and let us see what destiny hath made thee heir to at nativity. Doubt, some call faith, and ancient wrong and might, whom some name right, and darkness that the purblind world calls light despair with hope's brave form and hate who goes in friendship's clothes and happiness the mask of many woes neglect whom merit serves lust to whom see love bends the knee and selfishness who preacheth charity vice in whose dungeon virtue lies in chains and cares and pains that on the throne of pleasure hold their reins corruption known as honesty and fame that's but a name and innocence the outward guise of shame and folly men call wisdom here forsooth and like a youth fair falsehood whom some worship for the truth abundance who hath famine's house in lees and high mid these war blood black on the spotless shrine of peace lift up thy torch o year assist our sight deep lies the night around us and god grants us little light End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Then and now by Madison K. Wine, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. When my old heart was young, my dear, the earth and heaven were so near that in my dreams I oft could hear the steps of unseen races. In woodlands where bright waters ran, on hills God's rainbows used to span, I followed voices not of man, and smiled in spirit faces. Now my old heart is old, my sweet, no longer earth and heaven meet, all life is grown to one long street where fact with fancy clashes. The voices now that speak to me are prose instead of poetry, and in the faces now I see is less of flame than ashes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Epilogue by Madison K. Wine Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Epilogue Beyond the moon, within a land of mist, Lies the dim garden of all dead desires, Walled round with morning's clouded amethyst, And haunted of the sunset's shadowy fires. There all lost things we loved hold ghostly tryst, Dead dreams, dead hopes, dead loves, and dead desires. Sad are the stars that day and night exist above the garden of all dead desires. 
and sad the roses that within it twist deep bowers and sad the wind that through it choirs but sadder far are they who there hold tryst dead dreams dead hopes dead loves and dead desires there like a dove upon the twilight's wrist soft in the garden of all dead desires sleep broods and there where never a serpent hissed on the wan willow's music hangs her lyres aeolian dials by which phantoms tryst dead dreams dead hopes dead loves and dead desires there you shall hear low voices kisses kissed faint in the garden of all dead desires by lips the anguish of vain song makes whist and meet with shapes that art's despair attires and gaze in eyes where all sweet sorrows tryst dead dreams dead hopes dead loves and dead desires thither we go dreamer and realist bound for the garden of all dead desires where we shall find perhaps all life hath missed all life hath longed for when the soul aspires all earth's elusive loveliness at tryst dead dreams dead hopes dead loves and dead desires and a poem this recording is in the public domain end of shapes and shadows by madison k wine